Good kitten internet. Uh, before we start with today's episode of Vandal Hearts, um, I wanted to show you something and clear up a misconception that in rewatching the previous episode, and keep in mind, this is the same day that I'm recording this episode, the previous one. Um, in watching the last Let's Play, I think there might have been a little bit of confusion in the way I was portraying uh, Il and I. So I wanted to show you from the actual manual, well, in Japanese at least. So. This is, and you can see my head over my, um, this is what the manual has, and at this point, this page is completely free to be shown, because we've met all four of these characters. I can't show you Huxley's yet, because he's on the same page as several other characters that we haven't met yet, but you can see that these are the official art for all four of these characters, and Il and I is 19 years old. Um, I can't really, I would have thought about it, I would have had some way of drawing on the screen right now, and I'm probably not going to end up editing this, but, um, the number that's in the blue bar underneath their name in the red bar slash the English translation that I put above is actually their age. So, Ash is 24, Neil and I is 19, Diego is 21, and Clive is 27. Um... You'll notice that this art is actually fairly similar to the art that is in-game, which is nice, other than the fact that apparently only Eel and I is allowed to have two eyes. This continues with a lot of other characters, by the way. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is that both Diego and Clive have different names in Japan. Um, Diego's name in Japan is actually Jose Carpas Lisbon, and Clive's name in Japan is Keith Bardot. Um, we're going to see, I think those are actually the only two characters that have gotten renamed, but I can't quite tell. Well, for one, I don't read Japanese, and two, the wiki only covers the first set of characters in the game. Um, but I wanted to show you that. Uh, feel free to pause it at this point if somebody could actually read Japanese and wanted to read it. But I wanted to show you that Eel and I is not some, like, 13-year-old girl like I may have been portraying. She's 19. And, in fact, there are only two characters in the game that join your party below the age of 19. Uh, Eel and I is the third youngest member of the party, if I remember correctly. And it's one of the things that I really like about the game is the fact that you don't have the stereotypical Japanese RPG of a bunch of kids try to save the world. These are adults. Even Eel and I is an adult. Um, yeah, young adult, but still. Um, wanted to point that out. Um, also, Huxley is 65 years old, for reference. And he's not the oldest character in the game. One other that's older. Yeah, I think that's about it. Let's get back to the game. Move, oh, yes, over there, so I can actually see what I'm doing. Really, game? A really computer? Not letting me shrink that. Oh, you want to join us? Nope, apparently it really does not want to shrink that window. Oh, well, this will be fine. Um. Okay. And Want to join me? I can do kitty cam. Please? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, where we last left off. Oh, now you're going to join me? Let's see if I can get kitty cam up and running. Do. Select kitty cam, move kitty cam. There's it. Briefly saw it. There we go. Okay. So, um, where we last left off, we have been. Uh, we have a mission sent to us by Dolph in order to um, investigate the disappearance of General Magnus Dunbar, a um, member of the Defense Forces and actually the 
same division that the Crimson Guard are under. So technically, um, General Magbar is the second in line for the Defense Secretary position. The first in line being Hellspite. Um, we have been sent out to start going toward Gilbaris Island. But in the meantime, we investigated this palace. Uh, we went through these palace ruins on the way and were stopped by a group of golems. The group of golems was summoned by a young mage by the name of Elenai Dunbar, uh, Magnus' daughter. In addition, uh, her tutor, Huxley, who's a healer, uh, the two of them have joined our party after some convincing that no, we're not actually trying to frame General Magnus, we're trying to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, in a bit of dramatic irony, we find out that Dolph is actually working with Hell Spites and Kane. In Spites, technically. Um, because we had a scene that they were interrogating the Count that was captured during the riot. So, yeah. That's fun. Also, uh, something to note. We have five characters in the party, or, yeah, five characters in the party at this point. Uh, we have a hero, soldier, archer, mage, and priest. We have all of the base classes in the game. I'm not joking. Every character in the game is one of these five classes, or a promoted version of one of these five classes. That's it. There's nothing else. So yes, that does in fact mean that in order to be able to get to some of the other class archetypes like armor or Hawk Knight or anything like that, you need to promote. So this is actually in the manual for reference that each of these classes, except for hero, have two promotion paths. Uh, soldiers, for instance, can promote into either higher level, uh, higher versions of the sword based class or an armor based class. Archers can promote into either a higher version of the archer class, which actually gives them longer range for reference, or something in the skymen class. Mages and healers, or mages and priests, can both promote to either higher level versions of their respective classes, or they can promote to monks. So, fist. Alright. Let's continue on, shall we? I also don't know who that person is. Actually, no, I think I do know who that one is. That's a much later character. These kinds of bridges are just not safe. They just aren't safe. Come on, I'm going anyway. Not too sure about that. Huh? Those aren't merchants. Don't bother me, none. We could always sell their stuff for money after we kill them. Ha 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 ha! Oh boy. Where do these guys come from all of a sudden? Oh, don't worry. This will be a piece of cake. Hey! Looks like those guys are game! <laughs> don't worry. We won't even bloody our hands. Look out, I smell gunpowder. That's right. We are in fact in a universe with gunpowder. So something that you may have noticed in Vandal Hearts is that there doesn't seem to be a whole bunch in the way of fantasy things beyond the existence of magic. That's because there isn't. There are no elves, dwarves. Uh, there are monster, monstrous goblins, but in general, it's humans. And not only is it just the fact that it's humans, and it has decided to leave. I'm going to turn off kitty cam now. Um, not only is, the fit, is it the fact that it's humans, it's also the fact that we're not in a medieval period. This is the first hint that we're actually in more of like a renaissance-like period. And we're going to have more hints later on to narrow down exactly what type of historical time frame we're talking about here. But outside of the use of magic, the setting's actually fairly realistic. Huh? I missed! Well, that's okay. This bridge will collapse soon, anyway. 
They're headed for the bottom of the river. Let's go down river and get ready to catch us some treasure. This is not good. Let's cross this bridge before it collapses. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So, this is a standard battle, except that there's a timer involved. So every round, this bridge will blow up more and more of the bridge as time goes on. In other words, we can't be slow this battle. Um, something I need to look up is any hidden treasure. Let's see if we can spot them before I actually look them up. First off, we can't access back here at all. It's not possible. We don't have any flyers. It's not going to happen. For that matter, we can access over here. We can access this section. Take the bridge. I'm actually not seeing any symbols on the ground. I'm not actually seeing anything, so let me go look this up really fast. One moment. Oh, it's harder for me to pause one moment. Well, that's a good reason why I can't find anything. There aren't any hidden items on this map. Why I look these things up. So, we just need to go through. There are no hidden items. There are no treasure chests. We just need to kill. But so we have brigands. These are level 5 sword-based brigands. We have level 5 bow-based hunters, and we have giant bats who are flying. So keep in mind, the giant bats will be weak against archers, and the brigands will be strong against, or the, sorry, yeah, the brigands will be strong against archers, and the hunters will be weak against sword. Not that that helps too much. Now, something I wanted to know, healing costs three, that's what I thought. Now, it does have a decent range, mind you. But it costs 3 MP, so it actually does make sense to keep an item on Huxley for healing rather than Mage Oil. Okay. So something to keep in mind is that these giant bats have the ability to poison. So I don't really want to be standing there, I want to go there. I think it removes Wait, I'm gonna be attacked by the flying unit that way, aren't I? though, so it's fine. And now you're nearly dead. The other one won't be able to reach, but we'll move as close as they can. This is fine. We want them up close. Makes things easier. The hunters are going to be a problem next round, because they're going to be able to hit our characters. Right before the player turn, one row gets bombed out. Okay, so it's one turn for each of those squares. You and I, why don't you whip out some golems now? <sighs> don't you remember? You destroyed them all. You know how long it makes to take those go- It takes me to make those golems? One year to form them from the mud and two years to give them life. Hey, okay, I got it. Next time you should make them a little more durable. <laughs> I like the banter between characters, personally. Okay, that giant bat is not long for this world. Uh, 
Uh, what's the range on Dark Star? Four, so I am going to have to move up one. Okay. I might have wanted to give Huxley a better weapon now that I'm thinking about it. Actually, let's save before I do this. There's no way to change equipment in combat like I thought. I don't think I can do enough damage with the weak staff that I have. Never mind. 26 XP. Dark Star, one of the brigands. Such special effects right there. That was 24 points of damage. Decent. Dang it, I was hoping he would die from that. Well, on the plus side, Diego leveled up. On the minus side, Diego's not the lowest level member of the party. Actually, wait. No, Diego was tied for the lowest, so that's actually fine. Okay, which of you actually have a higher attack? You have 32 attack. You have 26 attack. It is actually better for me to take out the stupid bat. Okay. Not a great move. Now is a great time to use that mushroom. Fortunately, I can only hit three of them. I'm gonna hit these three. But I'm not gonna use the mushroom otherwise, so I might as well just see now. Get them all poisoned. Or not, you know, status effects. I got two of them, that's not too bad. And yes, using ob items in combat, even if they're not healing, does in fact XP. Poison actually does a decent amount of damage, by the way. Yep, I expected the back attack. Not much I can do about that one. So that other brigand is going to die regardless of who they attack, even if they attack Diego. Which is intentional. Um, at least one of those archers are going to end up attacking Ash. No, I think both of them are. But we have healers now, so it's fine. Yeah, the back attack, they can't resist it. Luckily, we're fine. Don't worry about it. And the rest are just going to sit there and not move like smart AIs. <laughs> Looks like you guys could use some help. Who are you? As my back is turned and not looking at all. My name's Kira Wolfstan. Let's fight together. Congratulations, we have a new character. So Kira is already level eight and is actually a fairly strong character and is another archer. Wasn't obvious from the sprite. So Kira has the same equipment as Diego, I believe. Light leather light, light leather light, yeah. Same level as Diego, or as, yeah, as Diego. 36, 35, 32, 36, 35, 31, and almost identical stats. Um, in general, if I remember right, all of the same base class have roughly the same stats. They might be like one off or something like that.
Let's have Kira show off. Because that's really the point of this battle, is for Kira to show off. Suck up this, brigand! What a fighter! Told you. Just to show off. Okay. Hux, you're going to heal Ash. Almost completely full healing. Not quite, though. You're dead. Might actually become a problem. That's okay. Your turn to get Dark Star. Oh, I could just probably slap you in the face and kill you. I think we're gonna have an archer off over here. Good old fashioned West Virginia shoot off. I think I actually take out the archer and not take out. Oh, I can't take out the archer. Well, crap. I do like the way Il and I at mage class attacks. And yes, all of their sprites will change upon promotion. Oh boy, do they change upon promotion. Yep, that one's gonna go after Hux because Hux a priest. Not that that's going to be much of a problem. Yeah, you're an idiot. You're attacking a archer with a flying unit. All right, and the four brigands approach. Might have been a better option for the mushroom, but that's okay. We have a fire gem anyway. I could sell the fire gem, but I don't really need the money. Okay, how are we doing on hit points? The only one that's really bad is Diego. And Diego is totally in range of one of them this turn. Just one, actually. So if I have somebody stand in front of Diego, he's fine. How are you doing on XP? You'll level up if you kill somebody. And I do need Hux to level up. Two! Oh, damn it, you're at 99 XP, aren't you? Yep. Alright. Almost that promotion level already. You're uh you hit from here. No. How about here? Yep. Get some extra damage on some people. I'm a little concerned about Clint. He can take two hits, I think. Actually, it might just be one. Uh, 
but I could potentially take out this brigand. Or that one. Take that one out. Let's see if this was a good idea. problem is that Clint can't take on three, and there's a decent... Okay, good. They're attacking Ash. We're fine. Ash has plenty of hit points. That one's dead. Waste of XP. Ooh, that was a lucky dodge. Clint should be leveling up from that, I think. No. Oh. All right. There's only one left, so now is a good time for healing. I don't know if I can get Lux all the way up there, though. No, definitely not. But I can have Hux heal Diego, at least. Get some efficiency on my XP. Now Hux is leveled up. Okay, good. If I remember right... Hux needed to reach one more level to get a defensive spell. Am I right? Yep, Mystic Shield is level 8. Um, we do need Eel and I to reach level 8. Which is why I'm going to have Eel and I be the one that kills the last brigand. I don't think that'll be enough to level up Eel and I, but it'll be close. I might be at that 1 XP thing again. You'll notice, even with me jabbering on a whole bunch, this has not been a very long video. Yeah, I'm under a half an hour even with a bunch of jabbering. The early battles are going to be pretty quick. That's the way this game works. A lot of money, though. That's nice. Not that I'm using the money for anything, but whatever. I'm Ash Lambert. Thanks for helping us. I'm Kira, a mercenary. A fierce warrior and a beauty as well. I think I'm in love. That's rude, Diego. Well, that's okay. Wanna hire me as a bodyguard? Looks like only... Uh, yeah, it looks like you only have this one you guy as your basic archer class. But I bet you could use another archer in your party. How about it? <laughs> she called me T. You're a fine archer. We'd welcome you to your party, right, Ash? But this is a top secret mission. We can't just involve civilians, as Huxley and Eel and I are off to the side. What are you talking about? Aren't Eel and I and the old man civilians too? What's the point of following the rules now? Besides, in her fight, and she's good. Yeah, that's a good point. She can come. By the way, all of the decision things, there's no real decision to be made. That's why I'm being contrarian. Yahoo! Are you sure, Ash? We shouldn't involve some woman we hardly know. Oh, yeah? Well, I bet I'm an even match for you. Not your strength. I'm like a grumpy old man, Clint. Can't you tell that she's barely clothed, that sprite? She actually is. Um, you can tell in the manual, which I will end up showing that at a later point when we actually have all the characters from that page. Um, she's not really wearing much of anything. The sun will set soon. Let's make camp. Yeah, we have some plot to go through. And I just realized the mouse has been there the entire time. Whoops. Faster than I remember. Don't mind me. Just made a camp next to that bridge. 
By the way, that's Ash's theme. If you haven't figured it out, every character in the game, every playable character, I should say, and many NPCs, have a specific theme. This is Ash's theme. Um, when we first met Elenai and Huxley, we actually heard both of their themes, right, one right after the other. Uh, I just didn't think to point it out at the time. Oh, you have been asleep? How much I in you to take me? And I understand you're worried about your dad, but you should know it's possible that he actually is a traitor. Just saying, he does work for Hellspites, and Hellspites, that name is so obvious I'm going to betray everyone in sight that it kind of sucks everyone into a black hole of traitordom. It's also possible that he has reasons that neither of us know about. I want you to be ready to judge for yourself when the time comes. By the way, Ash is a very level-headed main character for an RPG. Um, that's not to say that he won't rush into danger or anything like that, but the characterization of Ash Lambert is one of maturity. It's clear that Ash just pauses, stops, and thinks. You've been able to see that so far with every battle that we've had, where Ash is the one that's calming down Diego from doing something stupid, or stopping thinking about it and taking a step back. It's an important characterization, because it's one that I don't find happening very often in an RPG. You get a lot of anti-heroes, you get a lot of idealistic heroes, you don't get the calm and rational variety. That's not to say that Ash can't be irrational. He's actually a very three-dimensional character, strangely enough. You're trying to say, but I trust my father completely. Truth is, adopted. I'm a war orphan General Magnus picked up 15 years ago. Went through something horrible before he found me. I don't have any memories from. I don't know who my parents were, my real home, anything, or my real name, or anything else about myself. I was scared, trembling. He loved me as if I was his own flesh and Why? And against the if even if the entire world is against him, I I'll still trust my father. See, we trust each other. The powerful bond you have. Jealous. Trust your father? not a matter of trust, he's kind of dead. He died 15 years ago, during the revolution. I'm so sorry. So, that means that since Ash is 21, that means that Ash was 6 years old when his dad died. That's a bit rough. And you're going to hear a lot of things like that in this game. This game does not paint that, revo uh, that revolution nicely. It's not that it's, holy crap, that was a horrible, terrible idea, so much as it's being honest about the effects of an actual revolution. We've already seen signs of that happening. The whole um, Noble's Ghetto situation. Um, the fact that there's a bloodthirsty murderer that's the head of an anti-terrorism association that the council seems to be perfectly intent on keeping, that there's nothing wrong with. We've already seen Ash being called a traitor. There's a lot more depth in this game than what meets the eye. No, don't be sorry, he deserved it. Or he doesn't deserve it. My father was a soldier in the Liberation Army, but he switched sides and died in traitor's death. This is what keeps going on in the back of Ash's head over and over and over again. 
He is the son of a traitor. In and this is meant to be a direct correlation with the American Revolution, uh, and how that the American Revolution, for those of us that live in the U.S., were typically given a very idealistic viewpoint of the American Revolution when we're going through our history classes. It wasn't a very idealistic revolution. Um, the reason why General Washington won some battles is because he snuck up in the middle of the night and butchered a bunch of relatively innocent mercenaries after getting them drunk from a Christmas celebration. This revolution was not pretty, and Ash Lambert, his father, is being depicted here very similar to the American revolutionary hero slash traitor Benedict Arnold, where Benedict Arnold switched sides toward the end of the American Revolution and ended up choosing the losing side. This is the situation that they're referring to. It is a direct reference, as far as I'm aware. My mother and I faced constant humiliation. After my mother died, I fell apart, and only Commander Beckett trusted me. Saved me for myself. So you have a parallel between Elanai and Magnus, and Ash and Clive. Clive Beckett, that is, who we met earlier. Um... There's a lot of parallelism that goes on in this game. I honestly think somebody can write a philosophical thesis over some of the things in this game. Although not as much as Final Fantasy Tactics. Holy crap, is that... That in of itself is a philosophical thesis, if it was translated properly. But... Ash has a lot of bad memories growing up. And I'm guessing his mom must have died somewhat recently. The reason why I say that is that the commander picking him up, it's not like the commander is an actual father figure to him. The commander is just his commanding officer and a friend. Which means Ash was probably at least close to being an adult at the time. If I'd have to make a guess, his mother probably died maybe about five years ago or less. And he's had to work twice as hard to overcome all of the... Uh, undue influence his father actually had in, you know, being branded a traitor and all. You've already seen signs of that toward the beginning of the game, even. Oh, anyway, I didn't mean to bore you with that. Um, please, just call me Ash. Everybody else does. Sure. Ash, you can call me Il and I. Between. I deal and I. And that is it for scenario. That was scenario four. Scenario three. I'm already losing track as to which scenario it was. I think that was Scenario 3, and we're now on to Scenario 4. And yes, I've already backed up these. And that's it. Uh, I've been Aetherspoon. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you next time, Internet. Bye!